Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is Kimi K. Brick Artisan. In this video, we'll be doing something different. And as what you would have seen in the thumbnail, we'll be doing a retaining wall design or guide uh, that can be used in raised platforms or um, in your tunnel area if you have those in your LEGO city. Uh, so what you would have seen in uh, my previous city when I had a smaller room, I had a raised platform uh, that had modulars on top and where the train would have gone from the tunnel over there, rotated and went back inside the tunnel. And then I had the Diagon Alley at the back of the tunnel or inside the uh, raised platform sort of like a hidden area and although this city layout isn't uh, in that stage yet I do intend to have raised platforms as well here probably in that area over there or this whole area here um, but I won't be doing the same technique that I did before where I just used um, this felt cloth uh, to cover up the raised platform and acted as a green wall. So here in this video, I'll be showing you my design for a retaining wall using something that you wouldn't expect or have seen in my other designs. I actually will be using parts that uh, are like these which is the road slopes and that in itself would be helpful for city builders as it would save them a bit of money and utilize the pieces that would normally be in the storage bins or in your inventory not being used so if you plan to have a race platform and you have been using these new road plates you'll be able to use these road slopes as part of the retaining wall, which I will be showing you in a few minutes. So I'll be using my downtown magic shop as a sample where I've placed it on top of a box. And this box would signify the platform or the raised platform that uh, you will be using or I will be using in my Lego city. And I've thought about the height I don't want it to be too high that um, it ends up being too unstable and I don't want it to be too low that it doesn't really have any other purpose um, and it, it's not so different from the normal uh, base or this green felt here so I thought the best height for this one would be around 10 bricks high. It could be different for your city if you plan to have it be higher. Um, example, if you have use for the bottom area for something else and you have a specific height that you need to attain. So um, it could be different in any other city. And the thing with my design is that you can actually adjust it to suit your requirements in your city. And so I have here the 16 by 16 uh, plate that has the retaining wall wherein I'm using these masonry bricks on the side and I'm using the road slopes in the middle to act as part of the retaining wall and what this does is it saves up on the pieces or the parts that you would normally use to build up this wall um, normally people would go in a promenade style where they would cover all of this area with bricks and all sorts of um, designs which is nice and it, if we had unlimited resources that would be ideal but working with the parts that are an in inventory I think this one is 
a more economical way of um, using the parts that you have in your collection to cover up areas that you would have for the race platform. And as you can see here, it also has some area here to extend your um, walkway on the upper level as well as the lower level. But we can adjust that later on, which I'll show you. Um, and with this one, as just as a sample, it could be attached or placed like that. And um, it has Technic pins on the side, so you can connect as many as you want or as many as you need. And you can also have these street furniture depending on the location you can add or remove some of them like this plant box here which will be included in my design as optionals so um, some of you might be thinking well how about access to and from the upper level going to the lower level i've also made a solution for that which has the um, optional stairs so in my design I've used a normal stair and added some more details to it raised it up to 10 bricks high and we can reuse this part here to connect and there we go now you have access from the ground level up the upper level and again we're using less parts than we would normally have because we're using these um, slope pieces from the roads. Another one that I have included in the design is for a tunnel. In case you are uh, planning to you properly use the bottom part for um, your trains or for vehicles, I have also here a tunnel entrance and or exit. Um, this one fits in for one single vehicle up to the eight stud wide vehicles. And the height of 10 bricks is enough for us to be able to fit in the vehicles that we have in a city. Like for example, this van, it has enough height clearance to be able to fit in, just like so. And you can put two beside each other, two tunnels beside each other, so that one will be going out and the one will, one will be coming in. But again, it depends on the design of your layout. Um, it also has connecting pins here, so you can connect the other modular type retaining walls. Now, one thing that I would be noting is that these retaining walls are not load bearing, uh, uh, meaning you can't have the load or the weight of the modular buildings be placed on the retaining walls design. This is mainly for the facade and the extension of the uh, pavement or walkway, but the structure underneath it has to be made up of uh, either wood or steel or something uh, to be able to support the modulars. And these ones would not be taking the load for those um, structures. And also, I've placed pins or studs here so that you can move the street furniture around depending on your style. You can have the plant box here. Or you can also switch to the bench and move it here as well. So you can play around with the design depending on your city layout. If there are some uh, already benches like these ones, Maybe you don't need this one here, and you can move it down here. 
I do understand as well that some of us have more limitations when it comes to the um, space that we have in our Lego cities. And the 16 stud deep uh, retaining wall might be too much. Like it, we might not have enough space for that. So I also designed an eight stud deep uh, retaining wall. It's similar to that one. Although, as you can see from the top, you won't, there is no extension on the pavement or the walkway on the upper level. But it still does the same purpose, which is to have um, a retaining wall facade that is able to cover up the race platform or the tunnel that you have uh, in your LEGO city. And I've also added, for example, this um, stud here, the jumper plate, so you can place advertisements, like for example, this noodle shop uh, signage, a 3D sign. You can place it like so. There you go. And you can have as many signages as you want all around your race platform or your retaining walls. And again, uh, this eliminates that repetitiveness that you would have um, in your layout in case you wanted to make uh, a more interesting facade. With these ones, you can play around with different um, 3D signs, stickers as well would work. And also, as you can see here, this one is different here. I've actually used these three by four modified plates or tiles, which normally comes with the minifigure, um, the custom minifigures. And you can utilize them as fences or as part of the retaining walls like this, or you can use the normal fences that you would find in your LEGO city. So it depends on, again, the available parts that you have in your inventory. This design also allows for us to be able to place additional street furniture, like the lamp here, which also comes with the road plates. And also we can place signages. I'll temporarily place it here like this or have it sideways like that it depends um, again there are many things that you can place on the pavements and as long as you adjust the uh, modified plates or the jumper plates that you place on your pavement you can put in uh, minifigures as well or additional street furniture that part is up to you in your design. So this retaining wall design is meant for us to be able to use the parts that we have in our inventory, especially these slopes. Um, I keep on finding new uses for these ones <laughs> because I have a lot of them and I want to use them for the LEGO City and I want to save up uh, the money so that we can buy more Lego sets <laughs> and and not have to buy small pieces um, for things like the retaining walls or the walls of modular buildings so um, yeah I I just enjoy the fact that uh, we're reusing pieces for different purposes in our Lego city um, yeah, so once this video is posted, I will also make sure that the designs for the uh, retaining walls in different forms are available on belverbricks.com and rebrickable.com. So you will also have a chance to try it for yourself if you like this um, idea for your race platform.
you can do and um, use the designs now again um, I won't be able to do this immediately in my Lego city but I like the idea of being able to have these uh, parts readily available when I do set up and you can further reduce the cost of the setup like this by changing these masonry bricks into 2 by 2 bricks or 1 by 2 bricks uh, depending on the um, parts that you have in your inventory anyway guys I think I've shown enough uh, let me just remove my camera and then show you the layout here like so um, of course this one would also have been two by two tiles but my order hasn't arrived yet so I used one by two tiles for now and if you want to remove this um, light bluish gray so that it'll have a continuous um, pavement then you can do so if you want to anyway guys um, I hope you enjoyed this video I will make sure that I will link the instructions um, which will be on belverbricks.com and uh, rubricable.com so you can also try it for yourselves if you like this video Please click the like and subscribe button and turn on the notification bell and um, I will be posting more mocks and guides and um, updates in my Lego city in the near future so I hope you tune in until next time guys bye